Hey all, this is Alan. I wanted to talk about uh, specifically the AP Physics 1 score distributions um, because um, it got put out by the College Board. Now, it doesn't have the solutions with the specific uh, score breakdown by question, but um, I did see a tweet by, you know, AP Trevor. Trevor Packer is the, one of the heads of the College Board AP program. Um, just, to, to, just showing what the score distribution did look like um, for AP Physics 1, and I kind of wanted to go through that a little bit with you guys. So here's like a link to the, the his blog post that describes the score distribution. Overall, there were 136,000 students. Now, my understanding is this is Administration 1 and 2. It could just be the Administration 1, but it does not include any of the digital exam testing uh, scoring, as far as I know. Because I don't think they've completed those scorings yet, but it could be the entire thing. But that's that was my understanding of of which scores they're referring to, mostly the the paper ones from administration one and two. Um, if you look at this, so 136,000 students, which is a good number, a lot of students are you taking in this. And if you compare the five, four, three, two, one distributions from 2019, 21, 21, it looks about the same. Maybe a little bit more people got ones than compared to 2019, and um, a little fewer fours and threes, and a little bit more ones, I would say. So a little bit of downward shifting, but you would say probably pretty similar in terms of scoring. Now, what inve in inevitably happens is people look at these scores and they say, like, well, how many people failed? Remember, 201 is really no credit at all, and that's what, 58%, right, fall into that. Which is what I've always told students, about 40% of the people will pass the exam, 60% will fail. That's pretty, 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 pretty good. Or they don't really want to think of it as failing, but really not, not enough mastery of the material. So, and it'll be a lot of people like on Twitter really uh, get upset or, you know, kind of like see this and say like, well, why even have AP classes if this is your score distribution? Or uh, the test absurd difficulty. This test doesn't represent uh, WTF. Um, are we gonna not talk about the fact? And and you can't comment on his on his uh, on his Twitter either. So that's one of those things that some people are a little uh, peeved about either, or just that like he knows is gonna get a lot of flack. I think he doesn't allow, allow commenting on any of the uh, the AP AP scores. And it's a fair question. Like so many people are not doing well on the exam. Like why is the scoring? done this way like why is it so difficult and I, i'm gonna give you a couple my take a little bit on on this so first of all i would say that the exam while difficult is actually i wouldn't say it's not actually that unusual for the level of difficulty that's expected i would say the hard part so Let's just break down a little bit more on the um, what else he says in this blog on this blog post. Um, let's see, uh, four people got a perfect score, so those are crazy people who get perfect scores. It's not me; I would never get a perfect score in this these tests. Um, let's see, there's just some stuff. But um, what are some just general things? Students scored slightly higher in the multiple choice se section than the free response question. So the free response is definitely the weakest section uh, for a lot of students. Um, about the same, but in general, the free response is, is harder, which is pretty shocking given that, like, um, you know, with the multiple choice, you, you have, you get, you get you're going to get some questions right just from luck or guessing, right? Cause you where free response, you can't guess at all. So it could just be due to that fact, but it, it, it kind of is telling on, on the free response. I would say that the multiple choice is actually a weird section on the AP Physics 1 exam. In college classes, you don't usually get that much multiple choice. I, th there are some cases where, where teachers will teach multiple choice, but in a, in a more, in a rigorous physics class, you, you usually all like free response questions. And I'm gonna show you what a physics final looks like from a college level class that is supposed to be equivalent to AP Physics 1. Um, kinematics was the best unit, followed by torque and rotational motion. And then the skills are are the math skills, but uh, this is the on the free response, which I found kind of interesting. Was question one was the most difficult? Three percent earned all seven points. 
could be there was a lot of common things that that got dinged on, but uh, that's a very selective data piece. I wonder if a lot of people got six, at least six points or five or six points. I would like to know what the point distribution would look like because maybe there were some easy point losses, like one point dings that were very common. So then it was more like six points. But um, th that that was the kinematics question. If you look back at question one, that was the the one where the 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 guy is jumping over cars, right? That for for those of you who took administration one, um, that's uh that was that was the the challenging one there. So I, I guess this data must be administration one now that I speak about it because they talk about specific questions here. So overall. Um, why, why is the test so difficult? That's like the big question that you're like, why is it so hard? Like, why don't they make it easier? Well, college algebra physics is actually pretty tough. <laughs> and, and that's ultimately why the exam is geared a little way. Now, I do have some qualms. I'm not, I'm not going to completely defend the exam. There are some, some aspects of the exam that I'm not a huge fan of. That is not, I feel, as commonly taught or as commonly asked about but in terms of the material and things like that it seems pretty fair especially the areas that people are struggling with which is the mathematical part so you see physics one of the things what i teach my students are is physics is difficult because it's a it's a combination of a lot of math skills in addition to layering on the physics skills and if you don't have very strong algebra and pre-calculus skills then, then it, 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 this becomes a pretty difficult challenge. Let me give you an example of a question from um, uh, my, like this is, this is um, physics 8A at Berkeley, okay? I didn't take physics 8A because I had to take a calculus-based physics class, but 8A is the algebra-based physics class, and this is the final exam. So this is everything that they're supposed to have learned. Okay, and this is from a 2016 final or something like that. I forget which year it was, but it was one of the finals um, for, for this. So this is the class that were you to get cre were you to score high on AP Physics 1, you're supposed to be tested out of this exam. So if you look at the actual exam, like here's a scenario. I have a clay target mass M is fired at an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. When it reaches the maximum height, it, it is hit from below. A pellet of mass M traveling vertically upward at speed V. Right after the collision, the pellet is embedded in the ski. So this is a two-dimensional collision problem, and you want to determine the maximum height reached by the ski before the collision. They kind of walk you through the pieces, determine the magnitude, direction, velocity right after the collision. Uh, what you know, everything is is analytical. So this is pretty comparable, I would say, to an AP Physics one question. Um, it's all variables, all analytical, no numbers. Right, you got to analyze these things, and this one is probably more complicated kinematically than, say, the uh, the the AP Physics one exam uh, this year, the question one. This this kinematics is way more complicated. The one on the AP Physics one, I thought was a pretty straightforward kinematics, although you had to solve everything in terms of variables. This one is more complicated. Like this one is is definitely a more elaborate elaborate question. How about a rotational question? Here they have something that's an apparatus that is uh, a spinning in a, a, a spool of wheel and a rope and a mass and they're releasing it using kinematics to determine the acceleration of the block after it is released in terms of H and T. So it's, it's released from a height and it's dropped and you want to calculate what the acceleration is of this system. So this is a complicated uh, rotational question. I would say more complicated than a simple Atwood machine because this this rope is applying a torque and causing this to spin and it's also spinning this thing. Okay. Um, they, you have to find the tension, rotational inertia. Here is uh, another experiment where you're, uh, this is for gravitational force. Um, yeah. And, and it, there was, so, so what, what you're being asked to do in AP Physics 1 is not that hard. I would say what's more normal on a college course is that you're it, it's more like question one. It's more equations than it is paragraph explanations. That part is different on AP Physics 1 than I would say than is in the usual physics course. You're not usually asked to explain in paragraphs why something is occurring uh, the way it is. Um, you're doing a lot of equation and analysis because that's what physics usually is, is a lot of analysis.
This one you wouldn't be asked, but you can see on an algebra class you need to know what a differential equation is and derivatives and a little bit of calculus. So this is supposed to be an algebra class, but I guess they still did a little bit of calculus on this one. They weren't supposed to. And then they also did fluids, right? This is a one semester college course. They do fluids. Fluids is the AP Physics 2 topic. So this is not, uh, this is a uh, thermodynamics technically. Um, so that's an additional material as well as um, some, some, some fluids and pressures. Again, AP Physics 2, thermodynamic cycle, AP Physics 2. So the problem is, is the, the college courses that you're supposed to be tested against are pretty difficult. Now, so that, 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 that establishes the difficulty. Why is the test difficult? The second question is, why do, why do kids do so poorly on the exam, right? It is partly the difficulty. I would say of the AP exams, it is not straightforward. Like calculus, I think is a very straightforward exam. It is not tricky in any way in the sense that the questions that they ask you are generally pretty straightforward. They might have a couple of questions that are a little odd that you've never seen before. But, but for the most part, most of the calculus questions are things that you've seen before, you've done before, nothing new to think about. Okay, which makes my opinion the calculus exam a little bit easier than college calculus. Because in college calculus exams, while you get some straightforward things, a lot of times it's very more difficult questions. At least that's, that's what I've seen from students that I tutor at a college level on different levels. I would say that in general, I would say the college calculus course is a little bit tougher than AP calculus. AP Physics 1 difficulty is... is is difficult question-wise because all the questions are new and unique. And, and when you're in a new scenario and a not a straightforward scenario, you have to know how to apply the principles very well on every question. Okay, so, so that's why I think the test is difficult for a lot of students. The other thing is, is you have to have a lot of good math background. Some students are not ready for the math background yet. Um, Honestly, when I took AP Physics, I had already completed calculus at that point because I took it my 12th grade year, my senior year, and I took calculus my junior year. So, um, but if you have, if you're concurrently taking pre-calculus, while your math is like probably pretty good, it's probably not good enough. Like if you struggle with the Algebra 2 material at all in any sense of manipulation, that part alone is going to be extremely difficult for you on AP Physics 1 in terms of like solving problems. So you have to have a pretty strong math background, right? And there's no time in AP Physics 1 to review your math. And, and that's similar to college. In college, they expect you to know the math. So you gotta have to have pretty strong math background. Two, when I took AP Physics, I had already taken a high school physics class. A lot of students these days are just jumping into AP Physics without having taken a physics class prior to this. Um, so we got freshmen, we got sophomores taking it. And it's not that you, the, 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 plenty of freshmen and sophomores will be successful at the class. However, to just jump in from middle school science into college level science, like AP Physics 1, is a little bit of an insane jump. You have to be very, very, very strong and be very, very disciplined at practicing problems to do well, um, you know, naturally. in a nat so, so that's a huge leap to go from middle school to essentially high school uh, college level physics and not have a high school level uh, science class or high school level physics class when i was in school you had to do you had to do the high school level of biology chemistry and physics um well you had to do the high school version of those classes before you could take the ap version of those again and even in my school the ap the ap chemistry ap physics students did not do do particularly well but but i think the setup was a lot better there were more people who were going to pass the exam than fail not not maybe these low of scores but i i think there's a there's a level of you have to have a certain it, it, it's it's a big jump to go to such a difficult college level level class so all of that to say is if you did not do well on the exam, that is okay. This is a hard exam. The material is difficult, probably taught in a very difficult way. I would say that's the other thing is, is, is I find that there are not as many good physics teachers out there 
I don't I don't want to I don't want to throw the teachers under the bus, but physics is a very difficult subject to teach, and there's not a lot of people with a lot of experience teaching physics. Okay, so that's that's also um, a bit of a problem. So all that to say is, don't be so hard on yourself if you didn't do well in the exam. The exam was difficult. The exam is meant to be difficult, and the exam and it should not put you off. It should not put you off from trying to do physics later. My biggest fear is that a poor score here, um, for those for those taking getting the ones and the twos especially, you feel like you don't like physics. You don't feel like physics is not for you, and that is not true. You really just weren't exposed to enough intermediate layers of, of, of what was happening. See, one of the things that college does is for your grade is you're assessed throughout the year. Like you have midterms and you have homeworks that are of, of you know, like good practice. But mostly you have midterms to assess where, how you're doing throughout the material and prepare you for the final. And for AP Physics, you just get one test at the end. And that, that makes or breaks your score. You get no feedback. Do not think that a poor score is a reflection of your inability to learn the material or your, your I, I, I worry will make you not like it, and that's okay. But I assure you that in college, <laughs> this may or may not be reassuring, there are things you're not going to do well. You're, there are tests you're not going to do well in, even if you love the material. And that's okay. Because the learning process is a bit of a struggle. It's a bit of a fight to to really master the material and really, really evaluate where you're weak at. And right now, you sh if you got a one or two, you should evaluate that. Okay, I didn't have a good mastery of the material. I was exposed to a lot of material, but you know what? I didn't really get a lot of the material. I, I clearly had some, but I'd seen it before. And so the next time I do this, the next time I take physics, not AP physics, but the next time I take a physics class, I'll know a little bit more and I'll know like where I'll know that I, I didn't understand that and I have to pay more attention to certain areas throughout the year to make sure it will help you refine how you learn so that you can get over it. You can't let it you're gonna have setbacks. Setbacks in life are inevitable. Setbacks in life in college are inevitable. You don't feel like you're gonna coast through and pass all your classes in college, get C's or B's or A's or whatever you're targeting is not gonna be natural. You're gonna have setbacks. You're gonna fail some exams. You're going to fail some classes even, okay? You can't let that be the determiner of like whether or not you are meant to study that or whether or not you went to. You have to follow, follow a little bit, you know, like, just be a poor test score doesn't mean you're not good at it. It doesn't mean you aren't meant to do that. It mean, doesn't mean that you're not a physics person or whatever subject it is. It means that you weren't ready for the test and you weren't, you didn't have a full understanding of what you were expected to learn. And that is the only thing you should take away is that it's a feedback. It's a feedback saying like you, 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 you clearly did not know certain things and you didn't know enough of those things. I don't want to necessarily inflate the scores too much higher because that feedback is important. The feedback of like, what did you know? What did you not know? Right? That's important feedback. And that's all you should take away from an exam. Not anything about your self-worth, not anything about whether you're meant to do that, whether you're naturally gifted at it or whatever. But none of that is, none of that is, is relevant. It's only feedback on what you did know and what you did not know. Okay. So I just wanted to uh, talk about that a bit more. You guys have probably heard me talk about this and I'm done rambling, but um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your summer and don't, whatever your scores are, I, 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 I hope this helped you feel better and um, I hope you guys keep trying on um, physics or whatever it is you wanna study.